Hi, welcome to the next training session of SAP FACO module. Today's topic for training is cost element accounting. In today's topic, we'll be covering introduction to cost element accounting, types of cost element, creation of cost elements. So within the controlling module, the cost element is a very important sub part. The first cost element is the first master data in the controlling area. Cost element provides with an overview of the cost and revenues that occur in an organization. There are two types of cost elements which we will be discussing later on. So within the controlling module there are four different master data types. One of them is the cost element which we will be doing today. The others are cost centers, activity types and statistical key figures. Each is tightly integrated with the others to provide the basis for transactional postings in controlling. Cost element is the center of all the transactional activity. Each posting in cost accounting is linked to a cost element and at least one controlling object such as cost center or internal order. Cost element accounting deals with the collection of cost and summarization of costs within controlling and post to the reconciliation ledger. The cost element accounting is useful to post the cross company across business area postings to the financial accounting when the company is following cross company code cost accounting concept. Cost element are treated as the cost carrier from the financial accounting to the controlling or within the controlling from one controlling object to the another controlling object. So cost element are nothing but the general ledger or non general ledger accounts used in controlling. So moving on cost elements are of two types. One is primary element and another is secondary element. Primary element cost that originate outside the company relate directly to the income statement in FI and must be included in the FI that is financial accounting chart of accounts. Secondary element cost that result from internal allocation activities. No relation to the GL accounts in the financial accounting. These accounts are exclusively for cost accounting and are only maintained in CO that is controlling. So moving on to the prime primary element cost element. Primary cost elements are linked to the general ledger in the FI module. Creation of general ledger account is a prerequisite to create primary cost element. There is no primary cost element without general ledger account. The primary cost element is the other way called a general ledger account in the finance module. So in the other words you can say that the general ledger account in the SAP FI module is also known as the primary element in the controlling module. Because whatever the GL number are there the same numbers are created as a primary element in the controlling part. Moving on to the secondary cost element. SAP also accommodates internal CO activity through secondary cost element. 
although not linked to the general ledger accounts they are just as important because to use the ability to track the cost via multiple postings to the cost objects a cost secondary cost element must be acted upon by another transaction that will determine the cost element therefore posted only within the co so secondary cost element is used internally in the co or the controlling module so as to transfer the cost from one cost object to the another cost object and that is why a secondary cost element can be created only in the controlling part now moving on both secondary primary and secondary cost element types can be broken down further to cost element categories we'll discuss about these cost element categories once we will be moving up in the sap system and the practical part so moving on now we can distinguish between the cost element and the gl account as on your screen the first side is the financial accounting where you have the balance sheet accounts adjustment accounts and the income statement this includes all your subsidiary ledgers like general ledger accounting accounts payable accounts receivable fixed assets and treasury in case there is on the other hand the controlling is on the other side where it has the cost center accounting internal order product costing profitability analysis and cost elements so on the screen you can see that the primary cost elements are very much linked to the internal income statement account or even you can you can have uh, this particular part all primary cost elements linked to the income statement account no secondary cost element in financial accounting and on the another side no balance sheet account in controlling now what does this means this simply says that as we have already said or discussed the primary cost elements are directly linked with the general ledger account so it linked with the general ledger account basically means it is linked with the general ledger accounts related to income statement that is you have to create primary cost element for all the expenses and revenue gls that is why primary cost elements are as you can see on the diagram is linked with the income statement accounts so that is why it is said that whatever the the gl accounts are there in fi the same is termed as the primary cost element are termed as in the controlling part now on the another hand the secondary cost element you can see is separate and is not linked to any of the fi sites because the in the fi or the financial accounting no cost elements links are there so the secondary cost element is very much internal for the controlling module on the another hand now comes the balance sheet account the balance sheet accounts does not have anything to do with the controlling part so this is a very important diagram so as to understand the relation between the financial accounting and the controlling moving to the next now is we'll be moving to the conf, uh, with the next part so creation of cost element either primary cost element or secondary cost element can be done in two ways one is manual creation of cost element and the second is automatic creation of cost elements the manual creation of cost element will be first will be doing the manual creation and then we'll move to the automatic creation of cost elements so moving up to the manual creation as you can see on the screen the different steps are there now this is the first master data in the controlling area cost element account or the whether you can say the primary cost element or the secondary cost element is the first master data in the controlling part 
So the master data in controlling can be created with these transaction codes as on your screen or even we can move up with the IMG screen as well. Thereby it facilitates to make any changes or fresh creation as per the requirement of the project in the organization. Now the master data in the controlling area are always time dependent. Hence we have to specify the validity period for the master data. So whatever the validity you assign to that particular master data, that particular master data will expire at the expiry of that particular time period. So let's see how we can create this manual cost elements into the SAP system first. So we can move on with the IMG screen or even we can create the cost elements with the SAP easy access screen as well. Both the options are there. For the easy access part, you can move with the options over here in the accounting and then you can find the controlling in this tab and in controlling you can find the cost and element accounting. So within the cost element accounting you will find the options like first is the master data. So if you want to create the master data whether it is a primary cost element or the secondary cost element we can go to this and in that we can see again the cost element. We can expand that part and now we can further expand to individual processing and in that you can see create primary, create secondary, change, display and delete. So these are the options within the cost element which can be created individually or manually whereas the collective processing refers to the automatic creation of cost element. So this is the one of the way out through the easy access screen we can directly move to accounting then to controlling and then to cost element accounting master data then to the cost element and then individual processing and then we can move on to the first step that is to create primary cost element. So that is as on your screen as per this. So this is one of the options to reach out for creating the primary cost element. The another option is we can go through with the IMG screen that is we have to execute the SPRO first enter then we have to go to the SAP reference IMG click on to that and then we can move on this to controlling and in controlling you can find the cost element accounting again over here and then you can expand this then you can find the master data again we can expand that then you find the cost element again we can expand that and in this you will find the cost element. So this is over here the cost element once you execute on it this will take you to the next path and here you can find create primary cost element and the third option is to create secondary cost element. So this is the second way out by which you can reach out to create the cost elements in SAP system. So whichever you have to create you can move on on the screen over here create and you can double click on that and the screen will take you to create the primary cost element. So once I have double click on to the primary cost element creation the SAP took me to the next page that is it asked the controlling area. So the controlling area we have created is Z100 enter. Now as said that the cost element uh, have the time validity. So you have to assign the valid time period to that if you want this can be restricted to certain time period and after that it automatically will get restricted. So as said that the primary cost element is the element which refers to the GL account in the financial accounting part and the cost elements are created the primary cost elements are created only for the income statement accounts. So now first we have to go and cross check what are the different GLs which are created in the company code in the income statement part and then we can create the primary cost element for them. 
So moving on to this, we can execute the transaction f.10. We can assign the chart of account and then we can execute to have the list of all the GL account. So in this you can find the different GL account for the company code at the chart of account level. And that you can find over here that these are starting with four are the different GL account for the expenses part and the GL which is starting with three refers to the revenue part. So we'll be creating few of the cost element. Suppose I want to create now for the second one that is cash discount allowed account. So what you have to do is you have to take this GL account number from over here and you have to take it on this screen. You cannot create cost element with some other number apart from this GL number. So every GL account of income and ex sorry of income statement will have a cost element. So if there is purchase account the same purchase account number will be used for creating a cost element. You cannot take a different number for creating a purchase account cost element. The same GL number will be taken as the cost element number by the system. So if the purchase account is there, so the purchase account number will be taken up as the primary cost element number in the CO part. Similarly, the cash discount allowed account will be taken as the, uh, this cash discount GL account number will be taken as the primary cost element number uh, over here. So now from the valid from date, you have to take the date from which it will be valid. So you can put up the date from over here. Suppose I am taking the fiscal year start date and I'm not putting any any end, end date on the two side because I'm expecting that this particular cost element will be useful for the company till the company goes on. That's why I will not be restricting. But in case you want this to be restricted, you can change the date on the two side and as the date approaches that particular cost element will become inactive for the company code. So this is the thing which you have to take once you have taken the number you have assigned the validity from and the validity to date on the screen and then we can enter on the screen. So as I entered it takes you to the next screen and you can see the same number detail has been picked from the financial accounting ledger account over here. So the same details have been copied from the ledger account because the same number is on the other side refers to the cash discount allowed account. So this, num this detail has automatically been copied over here in the primary cost element by the system. Now moving on to the next part is the cost element category. So you can see the list of all the different cost element category on the screen. So you will find there are certain cost element categories. The one is primary cost or the cost reducing revenues. The second, the next is three that is accrual or deferral per surplus. Four for accrual deferral per debit is equal to actual. 11 is for revenues, 12 is for sales deduction and 22 is for external settlement. Now out of these all, the basically used are 1 and 11. With the category 01 that is the primary cost is used to capture all the primary cost accounting transactions. Whereas the 03, 04 are very is not been used in a in a normal scenarios whereas 11 is the revenue element which is used to post revenue in the controlling revenues are tracked in profitability analysis within the controlling and in the profit center accounting in the enterprise controlling with the help of this category 11 so what you have to use it for all the expenses account you have to take the primary cost as one. So whatever the different expenditure or expenses GL you have to take the cost element as 
primary cost element that is 1. So once we have taken this, now we can move on to the indicator. We don't have to do anything. In case you have any quantity measurement over here, you can assign it, but we don't take it because the quantity measurements can vary as per the transaction to transaction. That's why it is better not to select any unit of measure in it. The next we can move on is default account assignment. So in the default account assignment, we can assign the default cost center or the order, that is internal order, which the system will automatically pick while the posting. Now again, it is suggestible not to use any default cost center until it's very much sure by the company. Else every transaction will be taken up in this particular cost center and probably that will give a wrong costing to the organization. So what you need to do over here is you have to just select this category 1 and then you can move on and you can save this screen. So once we save, you can see over here the cost element has been created. So we can move back again to this particular step and now we can again create further primary cost element with this particular option and even if you want to change the cost element you can go to the second option change cost element double click on it and you can see over here the cost element which has already been created can be looked from the search options on the screen so once you click onto this option over here or the F4 key on the keyboard now you can select your chart of account over here and then we can move on to search and in that you will find there are two cost elements on your screen that is one is for purchase account another is for the cash discount allowed similarly you have to create the cost element for all your different expenses GL has on the screen that is for salary account for rent account loss on sale accounts and then depreciation on building so each of them will have to now create the cost element for their GL account so that all the postings in those expenses GL can be posted to the controlling module as well. Till now we had not implemented the controlling part but now as you move on and create the controlling accordingly you have to upgrade your GL account and you have to create the cost element for every GL related to income statement. So now, if you want to make changes to any of the cost element out of these, you can select them over here and then as you can see the number has been selected and you can enter so that as to check the master data of the cost element. So you can see over here, this is the cost cash discount allowed description for the cost element. The controlling area is this, the validity period has been assigned. 1 4 2014 till 31 12 9999 that means it will go on infinity then we'll move up to the cost element category which has been assigned as the primary cost that is cost reducing revenues so in case of all the expenses GL we have to take the cost element as 1 now in the similar way you can move on to the indicators the second tab the third tab just to have a look of that and in in any case in the future you find that you need to change the cost element like you want to assign a default cost center to this, to this particular element you can assign that in the future and once assigned you can save this screen and the changes will take place now if you move on to this history part in the last tab you will come to know that who had created this cost element so whenever you create any master data in SAP system, their history is saved that by whom it was been created, when it was been created, and even there is any kind of a changes in the in the master, then those changes are also stored in over here in the change document. So if you click on to this change document, that will reflect you the changes which has been taken place. So as of now, no changes exist in the system but in the future if you make any changes to this particular master that will also get recorded in the change document when by which ID at what date at what time 
the changes have been made to the cost element master data. So this is how we can create and we can make the changes to it. That is related to the primary cost element. Now moving on to the second, that is the secondary cost element. Now the secondary cost element is something which is very much internal to the controlling part where the different values are transferred among the cost object to cost objects with the help of these secondary cost element. So that has been done only for the internal purpose. So in this case, if you want to create any secondary cost element, you need to double click on the secondary cost element. So let's double click onto the create secondary cost element. So once I double click, it took you to the next screen and here you can assign your own number now. Now in this case, in the cost element, the system will ask you to assign a number and that is up to you what number you want to assign. Like suppose I take the number as A or suppose I take the number from the starting digit as 8 because 8 is something which is not used in the financial accounting ledger accounts number. So I will be taking 8 0 0 0 0 that is 8 4 times 0 as the secondary cost element number and I would be taking it as a valid from and to date over here and then I can enter on the screen now. So you can see as I entered on the screen it took me to the next screen. So in this case the system does not stop me from giving the number itself. So in this particular secondary cost element I can assign the cost element number as per my wish whatever I want to assign and then I can put the description over here on the screen and can move to the cost element category on the third part. So suppose I assign the name to this cost element as order settlement and the same description can be given it to it as well and then we can move on to the cost element category. Now here you will find the categories are different. The one is internal settlement, the next is order project result analysis, overhead rate, then the assessment, internal activity allocation. So there are a few of those options which we will be looking after in the, in the next training sessions later on like how the assessment is done in the controlling part, how the internal settlement is done. Internal settlement basically means transferring the value from one cost object to a different cost object. So when you create a cost element you have to decide that it, will it be an internal settlement? Yes. In that case you have to select 21 over here. So this is what you have to select. Now once you have selected the name, the description and the cost element category then we can move to the next indicators. Indicators are again the same thing we don't have to do anything and again the default account assignment is the same and the history will store your history of when it was been created as over here and when it was been changed. So once you have assigned all these things now we can save this screen and your cost element that is the secondary cost element has been created as you can see on the screen. So this is how you would be creating your primary cost element and then you can change your cost of elements as well and then you can move on to create your secondary cost element as well. So you can see over here on the screen that with this change option you can see that you can have a look of both the primary as well as the secondary cost object as on the screen for that particular part. So moving back, we can close this pop-up over here, a new screen and now we can move up to the next. So we have now in the, as per the slide, we have created the primary cost element. The transaction code for that is KA01. KA02 is for change the co primary cost element and KA03 is for display the primary cost element. So we can move up on the screen like slash o ka01 enter. Now you can see over here create cost element. This cost element is for primary cost element mind it. Then moving up to the next transaction code is ka02 enter. 
this is for change cost element as you can see over here the change cost element and in with this change cost element you can change both the primary as well as the secondary cost element part moving to the next is ka03 that is to display the cost element so again that can be displayed also with this so this can be used for both of them now for creating the secondary cost element the transaction code is ka06 ka06 enter so you can see over here again you find the create cost element option so this create cost element option is for creating the secondary cost element you cannot create a primary cost element with ka06 transaction code now moving to the next again one more important thing if we have seen now that we can create the primary and the secondary cost element with the img screen while moving through the spro and then moving in the customization and from there we can create the primary and the secondary cost element the another thing was we can create the primary and the secondary cost element with the sap z axis then the third option is we can create the with the transaction code as on your screen now the fourth option which is the easiest way out to create the cost element is when you create the gl account with the transaction fs00 in that particular cost account you can directly move on with this particular option over here the gl account is assigned so you we, once you know that for this particular gl which is related to expense account i have to create a cost element so directly you can move up from here to this edit cost element option as you can see on the screen so suppose i create a, a cost element for salary account the next gl for which a cost element has to be created so once you have executed over here now we can move to this edit cost element and i can click on to that and it will take you directly to that particular screen for creating the cost element and it automatically picks the same gl number which was there in the fs00 screen and now over here you can assign the validity period from and to and then you can enter on the screen and it will take you to the next screen and the system automatically copies the gl description to the cost element description and now you can select the cost element category so you can see the options in the cost element category and as said for all the expenses account you have to take the cost element category number 1 so that is what we have selected on the screen and so once we have selected we can save the screen over here so in this way you can see that the cost element has been created so similarly you can create the cost element directly from the display gl account or fs00 transaction code also similarly you can create for revenue as well suppose we take a revenue gl like we create it for a revenue that is sales account and now i want to create a revenue cost element in the system so we can directly select this and then we can move on to edit cost element so you can see over here the gl number is automatically been copied by the sap system now we can enter on the screen while putting the validity date from and to enter so now you can see that the sales description has already been picked up by the system then we can move on to the cost element category now we can search for the options and in this for the revenue gl we have to take the cost element category as 11 so that is what we will be taking up over here 11 on the screen and then we can save the screen so the cost element has been created for the sales account so this is how we have covered the creation of primary cost element then creation of secondary cost element change and display of the cost element as well now moving to the creation of cost element groups that we will come at a later part next move on to the automatic creation of cost elements so the automatic creation of cost element 
is recommended when creating cost elements at a mass or a bulk because it is the quickest solution and because you are probably creating your GL accounts at the same rate and also using the automatic batch creation. So automatic approach is used when there is any kind of an implementation project or a rollout kind of a project where the GL are created in huge numbers and accordingly the cost elements are to be created in huge numbers as well. So in that case is the manual process is avoided and automatic creation of cost elements have been adapted. So for creating the cost element automatically there are three steps one is automatic creation of cost element for the transaction is OK B2. The another part is creating the batch input session. So for creating the automatic cost element we have to create a batch and once the batch is created we need to execute the batch and then only you can create the cost elements are created into the system. So let's see how this can be done. Moving to the SAP screen. Now in this you can so in this we can see over here in the cost element accounting master data and in that the cost element the first option over here is automatic creation of primary and secondary cost elements. So in this if you expand the tab you will find these three options first is to make the default settings. So the first option is to create the default settings for creation of cost elements and once the default settings are done then we can move on to the second step creating the batch input session and the third is to execute the batch input session. So moving on to the first that is this part that is the default setting. So let's move on to the first option that is the default setting over here executing this. So once you execute the system ask is the chart of account. So the chart of account has to be filled that is 1000. Enter. Now you can see on the screen that in the chart of account the screen is blank. So what you need to do is you need to go to new entries and you need to assign the GL account number from and to or maybe the unsequential number can also come up over here and the cost element category has to be assigned. So for example now we can go for the chart of account and you can see over here there are number of different GL for which the cost element has to be created like for purchases, cash discount and salary we had already created manually. So now we'll be moving up to the next that is the rent account. So suppose I select this rent account to the last that is now the GL is from 4 till 9. So we can take this GL list and we can assign this GL onto the system over here from and to 9. And the these are all are the GL representing the expenses. So the cost element category which will be assigned in these cases will be the first one that is one primary sec cost element. Then moving to the next is the revenue part and the revenue part we have already created the cost element for sales account. So we can create from 1 to 5 over here. So that is what we can take up now that is 3000001255 and in this case now these are related to income or revenue. So for revenue GL we will be taking the revenue cost element that is 11 and in case apart from this you want to create any cost element for uh, the secondary part even that can be created like we can create 8000 to 8001 or in fact we already had created one so we can create from one to suppose I can create it to one only one cost element I want to create. And I can decide over here the 
settlement that is the internal settlement so this is how you need to do it you need to select the account that is the GL account number from and to which had to be created automatically then you need to select the revenue GL which had to be created automatically with the cost element category and in case there is any secondary cost element that has to be taken up on the screen over here so once you take these now we can go and we can save the screen enter so you cannot take the third part because that is not existing as a part no issues with that so we will be creating the cost element only for the primary cost part secondary cost part will be difficult because they should be existing in the system but in the system as of now the secondary cost element is not there so the secondary cost element had to be created manually in the system but for the primary cost elements we can create it in the system automatically so once we have taken the range from and to for both the expenses and the revenues now we can go and we can save the screen on the option so as we save the screen now we can continue it so the it is saved with the request so we have created the default settings now as per this the first option we had made the default settings now we can move to the second option that is creating the batch input session so we can move on and execute the batch so as we created the batch it automatically picks up the, the details that is the controlling area is z100 the validity is from 1-4-2014 till 31st December 9999 and the user name and the batch input user is user 10. Now we can move on and we can execute this so as to create a batch. Without creating a batch you cannot create the cost elements. So once I execute this as I have executed you can see on the screen these are the different GL which will be used so these cost elements are created by processing the batch input session user 10 in the controlling area Z100 for validity period from 1-4-2014 to 31-12-9999 so once this has been executed now we can go back again we can go back to the path so we have created the batch now now what we need to do is the last stage that is to execute the batch and as we execute the batch the cost elements will be created into the SAP system so you can run the batch job online or in the background for performance reason it is recommended that the program to be run in either background or display error mode it should not be executed in the foreground because in that case it will impact the performance of the system when running a batch online and if there is any kind of an error that can be corrected on the screen and can processed further so now we can move on to execute the batch so going for execute batch input session execute so as I executed you can see on the screen that there is a batch been created that is the batch which we have just created a while back we can select this batch then we can go to this process so as I clicked on to the batch process you can see the system shows me the message that the processing of batch input session is completed that means the batch has been the cost elements has been created now if you want to have the look of the session overview you can go and click onto the session and even you can select this and you can go to the log at times there are errors in that case you need to analyze these logs what kind of an error are there so as of now in this there is no error because all the 12 has been processed over here there is no error over here on the screen so we can select to the log and in this log you can double click and you can see all the different transactions are read and all the 12 cost elements have been processed that means the transaction was processed successfully so now we can go back and we can check those different cost elements with the transaction ka03 enter 
and now we can execute the search option and we can see now that how many batch are how many cost elements are there so you can see on your screen now that earlier there were hardly one or two cost elements but now all the cost elements have been created for all the income statement GL accounts so this is how you would be creating your cost elements into the SAP system so we are done with the automatic creation and the manual creation now we'll be moving to the create create the cost element groups so the cost element groups is nothing but a group of cost elements which which help on to track and cost control cost efficiently so cost element groups are created for where there are similar cost elements and that can be grouped into one particular group and in SAP number of different cost element groups can be created as per the requirement in the organization so how we can create that group and how you can group those different cost element groups can be done in this particular part so we can move on to the SAP system the transaction code is there the transaction code for creating a cost element group is KAH1 and we can move on to screen transaction KAH1 enter so you can see this is the create cost element group so if you want to create a cost element group you can create it over here and uh, suppose you want to give it any kind of a name to it like I want to give it as 1200 and then we can enter on the screen so once you enter this particular group has been created as 1200 and whatever the description you want to give it to can be assigned to it so suppose I assign it to as business area or let's take it as uh, direct expenses and all the different cost elements which are a part of direct expenses can be taken under it so this is how you can create the cost element group and once the cost element group has been assigned on the lower side what are the different cost element which will be a part of this group can be assigned like in the lower level you can move over here with this particular option lower level and in the lower level you can now search the different cost elements so it doesn't has a search option so what you need to do is you need to assign the cost element of your own suppose I assign the cost element over here so here we can assign it and we can also give the description for this so similarly you can create the different cost element however the cost element group is very rarely been used because this is not that much effective what is more important is creating the primary cost element and the secondary cost element so this is how you can use this cost element accounting part in the controlling area and you can create more and more of these different cost elements and you can save this cost element group over here so once we have saved you can see the changes have been saved on the screen even if you want to see what are the different cost element groups as of now in the system you can go for the search options what uh, the different as of now I think there is no cost element so there is one as a direct expenses which we have just created so else this is not been used as of uh, that frequently but you should be knowing it so this is how you can create the cost elements for your particular company code in the controlling area and we'll see you in the next training session with a new topic till then you can practice this cost element thank you